Welcome, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. My name is Chris River. And I'm Mandy Mack. And we are Poe on the Call. And today we are interviewing Poe dancer and Poe studio owner Lachin from Magnetic Poe Fit in San Hi, Jose, yeah. California. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, Lachin, thank you so much for being here today to share your pole journey with us, maybe some tidbits about your studio and maybe some business side of stuff as well. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. It's really our pleasure. Thank you again. Yes. Um, so I guess we'll start with something light just to wean us into it. What got you into pole dancing? What started your pole dancing journey? Funny story. I'm a Turkish woman. I was born and raised in Turkey and I moved to Russia in 2013 for work. I had no friends. I was barely speaking Russian and I was working in a male dominant environment as a mechanical engineer. And one day I went to see a show, a performance in a club because the trailer was so interesting and I purchased tickets. Oh my goodness, it was a fantastic aerial act, like with silks, hoop, pole, dancing, acting. I was amazed. It was fantastic. And the storytelling through aerial arts, that it was so elegant, artistic, and strong. And I had danced in various styles before that, and I've always been into new trying new forms of movement and dance out of curiosity and um i was searching the web for dance schools dance studios around me and i saw pole dancing classes i was already inspired and i said well why not let's give it a shot and i chose a random pole dance studio i signed up for a class i was nervous didn't know what to expect, had no idea. I went into the studio, asked with my broken Russian if I could do it. And my instructor, and now my dear friend, Daria Mandrik, she said, Kun Yashna, yes, you can do it. It was a mixed level pole dance class. Oh my goodness, I couldn't do anything, honestly. Nothing, simply nothing. It was challenging, scary, but exciting at the same time. I still remember the feeling. It felt great. I felt great. All the girls in the class were super supportive and encouraging. I was an immigrant in Moscow with a poor Russian and with zero pole dance experience, but no one made fun of me. On the contrary, they lifted me up, literally, and cheered for me. So it was so empowering. Uh, although I wasn't able to perform any of the moves, any of the tricks in my first class, and the studio I chose was very far away from where I lived at that moment, I kept going to that pole studio and took pole dancing classes. I became a member of the studio, and I was working I, mean, I was spending my whole day working in corporate life in a masculine environment and feeling very disconnected from my feminine identity as a woman but spending my evenings and weekends at the pole dance studio and being surrounded by beautiful like-minded humans and dancing on the pole helped me a lot to rediscover my body to reconnect with myself as a woman. It was powerful. So this is how my pole journey started. I'm glad that I took that one class. <laughs> a life-changing experience, right? That is incredible. Thank you so much for sharing that. I can't, uh, it's always so interesting to hear people's backgrounds and a mechanical engineer, that is just incredible. And now you're a pole dance studio owner um how how was that switch how was that transition? and did you find your background in mechanical engineering helped you with anything <laughs> so mechanical yeah uh i have a bs in mechanical engineering so that shift wow. was, yeah that shift um so dance i have always danced but 
it couldn't be my profession until I was 30, thanks to my parents demanding you know, a college degree in engineering. So it had to be postponed for so long. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, um, I kind of like that, you know, merging them together. Um, you know, math is a language, movement is a language. So physics that we use a lot, with the pole, right? So we talk about momentum when we're spinning or we talk about uh, on the spin pole, law of inertia or, you know, moments like find your balance, like kind of, so the those, you know, kind of technical stuff maybe, but it helps a lot. I find it useful. <laughs> That's awesome. I love how you said that there, there are just different forms of languages. That's beautiful. Yes, I love that you like show the the similarities between the two as well, because we talked to some other people about this and it's hard for some, like for me to understand math and science, but if you incorporate it with pole, I immediately get it. And then I understand all of the theories and everything behind it. <laughs> yeah, but it's just important. <laughs> oh my gosh. So in your um, like masculine surrounding environment for your work, do they know, did they know that you were a pole dancer or how, how was that um, for your life? Did you have to keep them very separate? Yeah, <laughs> no one knew that <laughs> I was pole dancing. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, unfortunately, you know, I wish that um, everyone knew it, but it was a very masculine environment and kind of like when you're working as a mechanical engineer in that environment. So you kind of like start to develop some masculine qualities as well to, you know, be at the same level with them in the game. Does it make sense? It's so that like you don't tell those kind of things or even like you kind of like maybe sometimes hide some of your feminine qualities even like so that's why I know it you know what I'm pole dancing in the evenings hey good morning everyone what time is the meeting so it's just like that so <laughs> I was like kind of had to keep it a little separate yes right you have to unleash after all of that <laughs> I love it well, you said that you had a movement background before you started pole. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, I was always into dance, uh, not fitness, not sports, but dance. Um, I was performing as a kid and I took, I was taking dance parts at the school theater. At high school and college, I danced ballroom. I, I performed a lot, competed a little. And then later I danced flamenco for years. Um, yeah, I was trained with great teachers in Spain, in Russia, in Turkey. And yeah, I performed, uh, I, I had the opportunity to perform with some of the famous Turkish artists in Turkey. And yeah, I continue also dancing flamenco in Russia too. But pole dancing was different. <laughs> so I, pole dance requires a different application of strength and engagement and it took me a while to figure it out so uh yeah when I moved to U.S. I got my master of fine arts in dance uh, creative practice with a focus on somatic movement studies and that education that knowledge helped me a lot with pole dancing in every way performing creating teaching functionality expressivity so um yeah, I researched and I really dived deep into the movement and how to use it. So I wrote my thesis on how to apply somatic movement studies to pole dancing, functionality and expressivity. So it's the first written document in the literature right now. So about, you know, how, in this topic specifically. So, um, yeah, so that being said, diving deep into movement itself and human body helped me more with pole dancing than my previous dance background. I love it. That's <laughs> I love it. Multiple degrees. Wow, I'm, I'm inspired. That's awesome. 
<laughs> well, I was going to say I love it too because you said that your first pole class you couldn't do anything but like <laughs> you went back and that's the most important thing because <laughs> a lot of us don't come back after we try that first hard class but you were like this is it for me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and did you start teaching um, before you got to the United States or what was that journey like? So teaching. Uh, so actually, when we moved uh, to California with my husband, my husband brought me a poll at home poll uh, as a birthday gift, <laughs> because he knew that I was missing dancing pole. And I started practicing myself at home again, here and started to go to the studios around the Bay Area for workshops and drop ins. And a funny story is that when my friends came into our house and saw the pole they were getting so excited or they were asking like teach us something show us some pole moves teach us how to <clears throat> dance pole and uh, yeah I love teaching dance actually I had a teaching background as well but uh, I taught yeah, I taught ballet creative dance contemporary dance um, in various dance studios around the Bay Area and I took good amount of dance pedagogy classes as well. I had that teaching background, but when they asked me to teach them pole dance, I realized that I need to learn how to teach pole dance properly and safely. And, you know, like I need to learn how to spot people on the pole. And then I went for uh, expert pole instructor certification and started to observe other uh, pole dance instructors deeply, like how they are teaching, how they are spotting. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a different thing, you know, it's, yeah, I had that uh, teaching background, but still you need to learn how to spot people on the pole. But that idea, I also knew that I want to go and open for my own studio, but that my friends request that they're asking me to teach them pole kind of sparkled the idea <laughs> of like, yeah, me teaching pole. And I'm then, you know what? I need to learn that <laughs> continuous education. <laughs> Although your friends just forced you to be where you are today. Yeah. You were necessary. Necessary. I know, such a good motivation for sure. Yeah, nice motivation. I love it. Wow, you are so qualified for in all aspects <laughs> of everything. <laughs> Too funny. <laughs> it's like lifelong learning you know it's just yeah, like yeah. always something to learn <laughs> it definitely is for sure mm -hmm. yeah what's your favorite style of pole then my favorite style of pole dance so i actually love a uh, low flow i can say that and also i love um bringing contemporary dance uh I also dance modern and contemporary if I haven't mentioned but uh, I, I dance so I love bringing contemporary dance together with pole dancing so I usually make choreographies uh, choreographies like that and um I also teach contemporary pole dance so that's yeah these are the two things but uh yeah I love low flow and like moving with flow and bringing with the contemporary dance and together mostly on static pole i can say yeah i do spin pole too but yeah okay <laughs> well <laughs> yeah love it I love, love it, it. <laughs> um have you do you like competed have you competed before do you plan on competing no, I don't compete. I haven't competed uh, in pole dancing. No, I just, yeah, I only perform. Um, awesome. Yeah, so, awesome. yeah, it's just a personal choice. I find uh, performance, you know, I think that there are more room of creativity for performance because you don't have rules and that don't mean, right? So you're more free, actually, when you're performing. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I haven't competed on that. It's so true. You definitely are so more free when you're performing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What kind of performances have you done? Yeah. So, 
Yeah, uh, one of the things that I actually did um, in the Bay Area actually for my master's degree, it was a 20 minute. So I'm trying to develop it for an evening long piece, but I really enjoyed that for um, one of the one of the ones performances that I did for my master's degree. It was like um, a 20 minute contemporary dance and pole dance performance. It was a duet. So that was, yeah, that was one of the things. And then I have some upcoming performances in April. So we will see. A 20 minute performance for two dancers. Yes. That's exciting. I can't even imagine dancing that long. <laughs> right, that's some endurance, yeah. Yes, but it, uh, think about it as a both contemporary and pole dance together. So basically, mm -hmm. we're also we're dancing contemporary in the space too. But still, like you're dancing for so long, right? That still sounds so fun. I oh my goodness, I would love for opportunities like that up here. That must be amazing. Right, we definitely need more performance opportunities on this side of the state. I feel like California has a lot of, of different types of uh, opportunities for pole dancers. Do you feel like that's your way in your area? Yeah, so I don't perform that much, to be honest. So I'm more, you know, uh, on the teaching and owning a studio site, basically. But um, yeah, when I find an opportunity that fits with my schedule so i really want to go for it but um our instructors perform i think you did uh you did an interview with jody Riker. yeah so jody performs yeah uh jody is one of our instructors so um and you, there are usually in the san francisco area that's happening but there are, yeah, there are more performances there. There are really good uh, pole dance and aerial act companies around there, dance companies. So yeah, in San Francisco, yeah, there's more opportunities. That's so awesome. I need to go out there and see what it's all about. And then we'll bring it back here. <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> so um, do you mind going into... I know you mentioned that your uh, friends got you into teaching. Do you mind going into how Magnetic Pole Fit came around? Um, maybe even a tour, or oh, if you can, definitely a tour eventually. But how? What made you decide to open a studio and the history of Magnetic Pole Fit? Yeah. So opening a studio. Yeah. Actually, you know. I told you I shared my uh, pole dance story with you, like how I started. So it was so powerful. I wanted everyone to experience this. So basically that's the emotion, that's the feeling under it. Because like besides you're dancing and moving and it's a physical activity, yes. But it, there's much more than that. You know, it's deeper than that. It's very empowering. It's connecting you know so it's just I want I wanted to reach out to people you know with that experience and uh, there wasn't so many pole studios exactly in the area in San Jose that I've been so there are other more studios like kind of a little bit north and then south so in here I said that you know what why not I go with that so yeah let's let's do it so it's a uh, you know let's empower women and everything but so coming to magnetic perfect it took me a while to figure out how things work in San Jose <laughs> again uh, again I was an immigrant this time in California so I had to learn uh, how things operate have to open a business like laws, regulations, legal stuff, insurance, more and more. And when you have a studio or when you have a business in general, then you have to work with many other businesses, right? You need an insurance agent. You need a tax accountant. You need um, vendors, suppliers. You need instructors and relationships building trust in relationships that matters to me a lot and it's so important for me in life in business in dance in creative practice so uh, i did lots of networking in san jose and i met uh, amazing women business owners i found mentors and they were very helpful 
I didn't know much about, uh, I didn't know anyone. So when I first moved in here and I didn't know much about the pole community in the Bay Area, but I found out that there's a fantastic pole community here in the Bay with full of amazing studio owners, instructors, students, performers. So everyone basically that I met on the road were very supportive, encouraging. So, and everyone was willing to share their knowledge and experience. So then, yeah, it's made things a lot easier for me here. So um, I opened Magnetic Pulse Fit legally on paper in May 2018, but my studio was able to start operating in October 2018. Yes, and then COVID hit, you know, then I had to close the physical location for almost two years. And yeah, that was very unfortunate. It was a hard decision, but then, you know, I had to do it. And now last year, finally, again, uh, we reopened Magnetic Pulpit in our new location. Yes. That's ex I'm sorry you had to go through that during yeah. Corona, but I'm so excited that you got to find a new location, <laughs> new and better things. <laughs> yes. Yeah, how what was it like um moving everything to a new location and and um yeah, just <laughs> can you tell us about that and what what was the reason and everything? So, um I closed the previous location that we had before pandemic. And so I I broke the lease basically. So then I didn't have a physical location for almost 2 years. And then I searched for a space again which is pretty challenging here in San Jose. But then, uh, yeah, so we started to operate last September here. That's so incredible. And like the perseverance too, like having to like shut everything down and like reopen and start anew again. Like that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. I know our, our studio opened probably around the same time as yours did. And uh, we had to shut down a little bit too. Um, the landlord, um, thankfully for us, was really um, nice to us and, and let us pay like much, much less for a little while. And then, yeah, I can't even imagine. I don't think that I would have reopened if we had to completely shut down. You're amazing. <laughs> I mean, it was it was challenging. Yeah, it wasn't super easy, but, you know, that's what I really love to do. So. Yes. <laughs> So do you want to tell us a little bit about this studio? Yes. So, of course, as you may realize, I'm a mover by all means. So I'm moving from one country to another. I'm moving my studio from one location to another. So I'm moving my body every day. So this time when I was reopening Magnetic Pole Fit, I asked myself, Lechen, why are you pushing so hard to open a traditional pole dance studio so what I mean by traditional is actually a normal pole dance studio with permanent poles uh, permanent tall poles but so this time I opened a mostly mobile studio so you will see what I mean so instead of permanent um, permanent studio poles we're using X stage light so here in the studio and we have even our meters are on wheels so you get, you might see, but they're not glass actually, a reflective material, so they don't shatter or break, so it's safe. And even the cart that we have to put our clean towels and alcohol, it's on wheels too. <laughs> so besides me, everything can move in the studio, <laughs> basically. I love, I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you, so, so you have other types of classes in there besides just pole then? No, actually, yeah. Uh, yeah, at the moment, the only apparatus that we use is pole. Before pandemic in our previous location, we were also offering Lira classes. But uh, here it's not possible, um, yeah, to offer those kind of classes. However, we are planning to add lollipop classes on this one so sometime this year. Yeah, so just being creative. <laughs> That's <laughs> so cool. 
<laughs> we can't lose the feeling. So what can we do from the ground up? Right. That's so creative, though. And I just pictured how beautiful that would look. Everyone up. <laughs> yes. How many poles That's do you exciting. have in there? So, yeah, I don't know if you can see here. We have five poles. We're a boutique pole studio. Um, at the moment. So we have small class sizes. So for now, at the moment, most of the time, we don't uh, share the poles. In some classes we do, but usually one person per pole for now, emphasizing. <laughs> and <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, but we're a boutique studio, but we encourage and offer a huge personal growth. So <laughs> in terms of movement and excitement. So this is our studio. This is the view actually if you wouldn't like to see and we have some tea tank tops in here so that little area and yeah our some exciting offerings we have some you know uh artwork <laughs> on the wall and the meters on wheels and the cart on wheels and we have wrestling inside so that's Pretty much it. <laughs> I love it. That's such that's a, a perfect space. That's such a gorgeous studio. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's pretty, but you know, I love it here. <laughs> yes. I love it. I've never heard boutique studio. It's like my new favorite thing now. <laughs> <laughs> Pity, like <Yes>. me. <laughs> I also I love, love too that you were open to like not not a traditional studio because and and some people might have thought that that would be limiting but I feel like um you know with the space that you have you can do so much more like you were saying the lollipop you could swap out those poles and try like silicone poles you can try like all sorts of other things and provide different types of experiences for your students yeah exactly and also we have a huge space in here um we also offer off the pole classes as well so we offer active flexibility we offer floor work we offer yeah contemporary dance time to time i offer some um, movement classes so yeah there's always the option to you know take the poles down and then use the whole space and put them on use the whole space with poles like all those kind of stuff so i think you know um it's freeing in a way and you're all ready for performances you can just take those poles set them up somewhere else and perform <laughs> exactly so we can carry it somewhere and then ta -ta, we're gonna perform here today <laughs> <laughs> why not yes i love it it's inspiring it shows like um, take whatever you have as much as you have and you can make it incredible like and still change the world with pole dance <laughs> <laughs> thank you yeah you know sometimes you know conditions situations could be limiting um mm -hmm. yeah if I insist on going for um permanent poles like my studio like I used to have yeah that was a yeah gorgeous studio with a huge space with permanent tall poles and everything but you know San Jose is kind of like tricky this uh, yeah Silicon Valley is so expensive in terms of rent and everything so just like you need to go with what you have yes I love it <laughs> now, how many how many teachers do you have um working for you so at the moment we have jody ellen and me so we are three people teaching so at our studio and yeah so as we grow hopefully we will have more instructors yes and do you have morning and evening classes or what are your class schedules like so most of our classes are evening classes because everyone works so they are coming after work so usually our classes start the earliest 5.30, I can say at the moment, yeah. And then it goes from there. And we have weekend classes. They are starting in the morning and they go like early afternoon. And usually pole parties on the Fridays and um, Saturdays, yeah. Love it. Do you offer any online classes? So at the moment, all of our classes are in person. However, uh, in one of our programs, 
uh, we have a six week active flexibility program starting and Jody will be teaching it. So it's going to start tonight. And in that program, we're trying hybrid. So we give students option of both online and in person. And we'll see how it goes. It could be an option in the future, but majority of our classes are in person at the moment. Sometimes I offer personally um, some private online um, call classes or movement coaching for people online upon request though, but under the magnetic pulse fit, yeah, our classes are in person. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Always oh, innovative and making money in different ways. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I think you talked a little bit about your um, teaching philosophy and your um, studio philosophy. Do you want to elaborate on it a little bit more? Or um, oh, yeah. do you have like a, a training process for your teachers and everything like that? So I would like to talk about our philosophy a little bit. Um, we here at Magnetic Profit, we value personal uniqueness. Personal uniqueness is one of the Bartonyev uh, fundamentals. Imgard Bartonyev is a pioneer in somatic movements and put the concept of personal uniqueness. What it means for us is that everybody is unique. There is only one of you in this world with your anatomy, physiology, with your skills and gifts and background. We're all different. We're all unique. That means that your pole journey is unique too, right? And that's actually, it's, it's so important to help students acknowledge that their pole progress and the moves that they are comfortable with or uncomfortable with or how long it takes for one student to get to the point that they desire might be different than another student. So um, yeah, we have different heights. I'm super short, for example, I have to adjust everything according to my body, or we have different habitual movement patterns, injuries, past injuries, surgeries, athletic background, whatever. So it's, you know, we acknowledge, we should acknowledge and accept that our body is different than any other body in the space. So it's very helpful and powerful in teaching and also, you know, for everyone actually. Besides this, our bodies are different every day. So you, your skin might feel more sensitive on a particular day or, you know, due to the weather, or you might feel exhausted emotionally or physically. We all have those days, right? So that's why I always invite my students to uh, check in with their bodies at the beginning of the class. So maybe giving yourself some tech tactile sensation, just noticing if you have any body parts that are tight or sore or needs additional love today. Uh, so it's just like important that the, this body awareness is important to avoid injuries and maintain a healthy body long-term, right? And also this helps like being aware of your body on a daily basis helps with frustrations in the poll classes. You may heard this. I I did this move last week. Why can't I do it right now? Right? Relax. Give yourself permission to take a step back or move, work on something else that feels good or better on your body that day. Or just rest. Right? These are um very important in our teaching, actually. So yeah, these two concepts are really valuable. I love that so much. I I especially I love how you that. remind us that we have come in with a different body every single day because that I think is the most mm -hmm. important thing too because we're all unique, but not every day is going to be the same for, for you. <laughs> it's yeah. so true. Yeah. Especially in pole dance too. Grip changes. Like you said, you get tired. Last week you were able to do it. This week you can't for whatever reason. Yeah, exactly. And then the other thing that I um, 
I value a lot. And this is one of the concepts that, again, like I studied a lot during my master's program. So one of the tools I gained is moving with ease. So how can we bring ease to our movements on the pole, even the ones that requires the most strength? Or how can we use our body efficiently on and off the pole? So I, I always talk about engaging the muscles instead of squeezing and holding the breath or like extension and flexion with breath, through breath or connecting upper body and lower body through your core or pelvic floor so that you're not solely rely on your upper body on the pole. You know, that kind of things. Or how can we... How can we let go and release sometimes? Yeah, for example, when we're spinning so that we can get more momentum and more flow, like how we can do those kind of little things. So they make a huge difference, I think, in pole dancing. And personally, I don't know about you, but I want to be able to dance at my 80s and 90s. So that I, I want everyone to be able to do that. So I think it's important to learn how to use our bodies efficiently in an efficient way, right? <laughs> right, though, like, I think it's so beautiful how you said you start the, the class, like, checking in with your body. But, like, mm-hmm. that's something that a lot of people don't ever, ever do. Um, <laughs> but to, to bring the awareness, you know, just to get in tune with what's going on, um, that's really empowering. <laughs> and that's why pole dance is so much more <laughs> than just pole dance in. <laughs> and it's I true. Love that. Um, I love the concept of moving with ease and using the economy of motion to kind of save your body, be able to do, um, because we're in it. I'm always trying to think of being in it for longevity, for the long run rather than like for only a couple years. <laughs> Especially if we want to make money for it for the rest of our lives, we gotta take care of our bodies. <laughs> so yeah. I do love that you mentioned that. Yes. And I love that you're also able to provide that type of um, personal care in your your class because you have such a small space. Yeah. And yeah. And yeah, that, really that helps a lot. Yeah, and then the uh, other thing that we really focus one of our, again, dance pedagogy philosophy at our studio is, of course, to provide a safe space. So you may heard about it a lot, many times, and it's great if you heard it many times. That that means that everyone is working on that, so it's amazing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, what, what does what does safe space mean? So it means physically for us to working with expert instructors that knows how to spot now the technique or how to protect your body so avoid to ev- avoid injuries in short term long term maintain a healthy body so and that's one of the things that is important on the emotional psychological and also again physical level is that we're trying to provide a space for our students that they can move freely express themselves freely through pole dancing or to do movement and dance without the fear of judgment, without the fear of judged, right? Because we all can look silly or weird or awkward on the pole sometimes, right? <laughs> you might feel, especially when you're trying a new move and that's okay. It's totally fine. Yeah. So it's just like, we're trying, we're learning. Yeah. It should happen in a way. So it's important to, give room to the students to make mistakes or for creativity, for growth, to explore new ways of movement, maybe something different than I'm showing, you know, every, yeah, maybe they found, they they are looking for a new way that works uh, better on their bodies. So it's just always great to give that room and a space for them to that they can try freely you know so yeah we're constantly working on that so I shared my yeah poll experience so I just yeah that's always like my goal to create that empowering space because I was empowered right I was inspired it was so powerful I love that so much thank you so much for for creating this space and you know 
perpetuating the love that you found in other people. <laughs> I agree, especially when it comes also to um, them being able to find what works for their bodies. Because sometimes um, you go to a fitness class or a pole class, and it's like, you got to do it this way. This is how I did it. And it's not always like that. So thank you for giving that space to everyone and sharing on it. It's so important that we all remember that all our bodies are different. We cannot force those stories into the same thing we did. We have to allow them to express their creativity and their emotion. Yeah. I love it. And um, would you mind sharing a little bit of how you um, market and reach students? Yeah. Yeah, marketing. Okay. I'm a huge fan of word of mouth marketing and organic marketing. So when students enjoy their poll classes and feel safe, at the space and have fun, they invite their friends, they share their uh, poll journey on social media. Basically they do the marketing for you. Yeah, and we have moms bringing their daughters and daughters bringing their moms to our poll classes. Like it's so lovely to see that. And it's lovely to see that the community building up naturally, it's a very effective way. However, it's a long shot. It takes time. It takes time, right? We know that. And uh, so one other thing that I find very important in marketing is copywriting, actually. So I still take some online, still my going education, I still take some online copywriting courses uh, to learn how to use the words effectively to reach people about pole and dance. And since English is not my first language, I spent probably more time than any other native person to write those copies but um yeah so i realized that sometimes when you change one word or the headline or maybe the title or name of the program that you're offering it alters the results it changes the results dramatically so yeah words are very powerful in marketing actually that's yeah what i'm thinking and for the first time this year, I tried paid ads on Facebook and so social media, um, Instagram, Facebook and Instagram. I was always distant and hesitant to pay ads. But I realized that most of the people don't know that magnetic profit exists in this area. So, you know, so there are many people that they don't know that we're offering pole dancing classes and they can come and join with zero experience. So... I think it was good to put it out in front of the people saying that, you know what, if you ever think about it, yes, we're here. We're offering pole dance classes and you can come, no experience required. So, um, yeah, I started running those ads late December and yeah, it's, it performed well, not bad actually, but it wouldn't be something that I would do constantly. Uh, so yeah, I would go with organic marketing in general. So, but actually, um, I'm thinking that if you have a specific program that um have a that you know have a, a certain date that's starting on a specific time and day with a number of people that are limited, so it works better than just shouting out that you offering classes regularly every day it doesn't make sense and specific program like limited so, yeah so for example we have a very successful uh, six-week poll program for absolute beginners and uh, that worked well so it starts on certain dates and goes for six weeks and it's limited with certain number of people because we have that much poll, that many polls so um that's why I like kind of like going with that. And it's just like very successful. And we nurture people besides the six week of classes. Uh, we nurture our students on that program with some at home exercises and movement practices that they can do until the next class. So, um, and that's a good thing that they are coming and taking with the same group that the class with the same instructor, same group for six weeks. I kind of be friends, become friends, and like, you know, um, it's, that that works 
that works good. And so that program, like running the ads for that program was better than running, you know, okay, we have dropping classes and you can come and take a class anytime. So that's such good advice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I often wonder about the Facebook ads and everything too. And I wonder if I it's worth it. But you're absolutely right. If it's like a limited time offer, it's much more um, received, <laughs> well received than um, just being like, hey, we're here in existence. Come try us whenever you want. Um, it gives them the urgency of that's a really good idea. And yeah, I like yeah, too but... that the beginners stay together because then you can know their background and you you know that they haven't missed anything, um, which is something mm -hmm. that perhaps we lose out on because we have our drop in classes. <laughs> yeah. So um, I don't know if you do something like that, but uh, I have a question that I'm asking. It's an optional question. You don't have to feel, but when you're signing up for a class, I'm asking the question of what are you excited about the class that you just signed up? So <laughs> I'm asking people like, what are you excited about? And, you know, most of the time, the answers are kind of like similar and on the other side of the pole. Like, it's not about like, yeah, of course, sometimes it's more about building the physical, like focusing on physical, but it's mostly other side, like emotional side. They want to say, for example, a lot of times making friends, you know, it's a space that you can find. Uh, other like-minded humans like you, you know, that you can make friends and we are in our most vulnerable, <laughs> you know, on the pole, <laughs> you know, that situation and everything, everyone is more sincere at that, yeah, at that time. So, and people are talking about building confidence. People are talking about, yeah, trying something new, getting out of their comfort zone. So, those answers are actually powerful too. So kind of we know what they want, right? By asking it. So we know that when they come to class, we know what they're looking for. So that six week pole program is one of the things that also we consider it because they stick to those same people in six weeks. I saw that in the previous cohorts, they become friends. Now they continue taking pole classes, but together usually, you know, that kind of stuff happening. So it's a good thing that growing together with other students. I love that. That's really beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, sharing that. I think that's such, such a good thing to think about um, mm -hmm. just for the camaraderie and community building. I agree. And earlier when you mentioned wording to a lot of, I just want to touch it quickly. A lot of us don't think about that, but you're right. Just changing like a simple heading or title can like make the difference on if they read it or it attracts them to sign up and things like that. Yeah, right for sure. There was another studio that I looked at. They had such cute names for all their classes. And I was like, that's such a good idea. <laughs> It was like newbies or something. I don't know. It was really cute, like what they had to <laughs> get to, right? But yeah, to make it seem like, you know, like different and exciting and like, yeah, all you need is like just one word sometimes. <laughs> yes, words matter. But yeah, I usually go with the simple and direct stuff, like so that everyone can understand. Since, you know, English is not my first language, I don't want to think it twice. Like, <laughs> Super. Sure, yeah. I like that. <laughs> Too funny. Yeah. Thank you for sharing those marketing tips. Um, yeah, of course. God, we always learn so much there. <laughs> we all need that, right? Yeah, we all need. Right, and I appreciate you so willingly, like giving the information because a lot of <laughs> you know, a lot of people like to to keep the information to themselves. But in the end, it's going to help us all if we help each other <laughs> yeah. exactly and what I saw here like I'm telling you everyone helped me everyone was so willing to share their knowledge and experience with me here in 
sen az they're like who am i you know right i'm just a woman a turkish woman like and a multicultural woman just came to california and trying to open their post studio so yeah i really appreciate it i'm so grateful for that experience and i'm so willing to share what i have with everyone too i love it thank you so much <laughs> And I hope it inspires other people as well. Um, you know, we're we're all in this together. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, do you want to tell us a little bit more about your pole dancing personally? If you have a favorite pole trick. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Honestly, my favorite pole tricks um change i think quarterly <laughs> so but one of the moves um i can tell that yeah my favorite could be brass monkey so i find yeah i find many movement possibilities into brass monkey and out of it so and i feel very comfortable with the move itself so i find a lot of room to play be playful like explore more when i'm in the move so it feels good. I usually incorporate brass monkey into my routines and choreos and stuff. Yeah. And then the other thing that I like is I love low flow and playing, exploring cartwheels, pole assisted cartwheels on the floor. So yeah, that's one other move I can say that I love playing with. I love it. Oh, and I was, so just, hard. I was just I was just thinking about the the challenges <laughs> that it must you must have doing low flow with the stage poles. Exactly. You know what? It took me a while to figure it out. It was so challenging at the beginning, but then you get used to it. <laughs> at some point you get used to it. Yeah. So for example, I noticed uh last night when I was uh, you know, again trying a cartwheel. And it's just like, you know, I have to land, right? And I don't want to come hit the edge of the stage. So I, and I have short legs and I'm just like trying to go all the way <laughs> up, like past the stage and go on the floor. See, it works <laughs> this time. <laughs> but yeah. yeah it's That's so difficult. funny. Right? Because there was one, we, we tried to do a performance at the stage poles and we were like, no floor work. We can't do anything. But then one of the students started getting super creative with the bass. And we were like, oh, there's like way more that you can do with this bass that we weren't, weren't thinking of. So it, there's like more opportunities, I think. Yeah. Exactly. There are more opportunities. And also one of the things that I usually do is like, you can sit on the stage and do like, I don't know, I'm going to show a little bit. <laughs> so like, you can do like sit on the stage and do stop like sitting on the stage. And, you know, like you can use the stage like in any way that yeah. you wish. And you can get on the floor if you, uh, if you want to be on the floor too badly, then pass the stage, go on the yeah. floor, <laughs> come back again. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, yeah it's playing you know <laughs> I love it right it's like a little chair <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> so that's what we have right now so how we can explore and be more creative with that so <laughs> yes <So fun>. <laughs> <laughs> well you said Br brass monkey is your favorite pole trick and you go in and out of it which is not my favorite pull trick, but I, I do I know there's so it. many possibilities in and out of it. But do you have a least favorite pull trick? Ah. So I would say my least favorite pull tricks are the bandy pull tricks. <laughs> bandy pull moves. Pull moves that <laughs> require more flexibility than I have. <laughs> so, I yeah. am with you there. <laughs> so yeah i just like you know uh like all those yes yeah, some of it especially split moves or like requires back bends more like flexibility by flexibility those kind of moves are not my favorite so i don't prefer like incorporating the a lot when i'm dancing <laughs> yeah anna so i told you everybody is different my body <laughs> resisted <laughs> Yeah. I love it. I'm with me there with the flexibility thing. <laughs> oh. 
I think I guess the other question about um, you as a pole dancer, do you want to share with us what type of pole grip you use for your hands or your body? Okay, uh, I use dry hands for a long time, but I don't know what changed. Either the chemical formula of dry hands or my skin type changed as I get older. So we kind of don't like each other anymore. So it's just like, <laughs> it doesn't work well. <laughs> so now I'm in the um, period of trying variety of pole grips to find something that works for my new skin conditions maybe. Um, but, uh, yeah, so now around the studio, you can find lots of different brands. So I'm kind of like putting them and trying all of them right now. So I will let you know when I find something, but also I received a sample from a new grip called Babe Grip, I guess. I think they're from Texas. So I kind of like that sample. So I plan to order one full bottle to see how it goes, but yeah. And um, yeah, I'm supporting a new business, right? So <laughs> it's just, yeah. I've heard yeah. of them too, but you liked it. Maybe I'll, I'll take a look at it. Yeah. Yeah, right, that's not so close, actually. So. Skin is always changing as well. <laughs> no, it's changing and everyone has their little tips. Some people even use moisturizers because they are so dry. Or yeah, I and I realized that I started to maybe because of that, um, because our relationship with dry hands at the moment. So I started to, I started to use less and less grip nowadays. So kind of maybe, I don't know, like probably my skin somehow changed due to the weather, due to age, aging and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> my skin has changed due to age. <laughs> So dry my hands are so dry i know i'm in the same process of nothing's working but we'll see if the smoky hands i ordered work let's oh see. yeah ha so yeah. you haven't tried it yet is it you're gonna try i tried i tried a little bit that a student brought in but it was only like a one-time deal so and it worked so i'm hoping it buying it will continue to work oh nice <laughs> i should try that too oh. I'm right, excited. I'm gonna I really, too. Yeah. <laughs> I really like the power pole moves and nothing has worked for me at all. And supposedly that's supposed to work. So let's see. Right. <laughs> Everyone's been raving about it. So we'll try. <laughs> yeah. Let me know, please, how it yes. goes. Oh, yeah, we'll definitely. probably have to do another like review <laughs> of all of the new pole grips that are out. <laughs> that's gonna be like two or three episodes <laughs> that would be helpful yes yeah. for sure <laughs> well do you have anything up and coming for the studio that you want to share so yes it's exciting that we will have our first showcase uh since the pandemic in april so we will have it in april so our performance group is coming together yeah lovely so and um, what else is coming is that i have i will be performing under the name of magnetic pulpit again in a dance festival in san jose uh, at the end of april 29th i guess so it's an annual dance festival organized by sj dance co one of the contemporary dance companies in here and uh yes so we have our new six-week pole program starting on February 15. And we will also have some Valentine's Day special poll classes that we will have fun and spread the love. Yes. I love it. When did you say that you were going to be part of a contemporary poll or not? Just contemporary dance festival? No, it's gonna be yeah. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna be dancing pole. I'm gonna be uh, yeah. I'm working on a contemporary pole choreography at the moment. So I'm just like yeah, making the that's piece. amazing. So, yeah, it's gonna be on April 29th. Yes. Oh, that's so awesome because there's several like dance festivals in our area, and I often wondered how receptive they would be to pole dance, um, just because I feel like the environment of dance around here is a little bit different <laughs> it's okay you are. all dance is dance too right like, the dance yeah. it's still a style so if it's a dance festival 
and you're dancing. <laughs> right? right? Bring your stage and start dancing. <laughs> right? All right, I'm going to start reaching out. I have to stop being scared. <laughs> But right, it should be all different types of dance. Exactly. Yeah. And here, like, there are all different types of dancing in those festivals. It's not my first time uh, joining this festival, but it's going to be my first time joining with a pole dance, um, contemporary pole choreography. So I danced contemporary dance before um, in this festival, too. But you know, there are Indian dances or cultural dances. There's ballet, contemporary, or hip hop, or, you know, all different types of dances that you have so why not fall you know why not hoop or something so these are dance forms yes yeah i love it it's happening to be continued <laughs> to be continued <laughs> <laughs> so i think that was all of the questions that i had to ask mm -hmm. Is there anything else you would like to share with um, maybe people thinking of pole dancing or maybe pole dancers thinking of opening a studio who may be hesitant, anything at all? Oh, I would say just go for it. <laughs> Either yeah. you want to try a pole class or you want to pole, you want to open a pole studio or, you know, anything about pole or you want to just try yeah perform I don't know compete whatever your goal is I would say just go for it you know you learn it a lot in the process yeah don't we so and yeah and I think it's important to know that we're all here to support each other so if anyone has any questions I'm always here <laughs> just... <laughs> thank you for that that that's beautiful <laughs> <laughs> yes. We will have all your links that you sent us on the bottom of the comments and notes for everybody to reach out and follow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, Lachin, thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us today and, and to spread the your love of poll to everyone and, and hopefully inspire others to do it as well. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was a lovely conversation. I love being here. Thank you. This was so much fun. Thank you so much, my team. I enjoyed this. <laughs> right, and hopefully we can come out and visit you and experience your studio in person sometime. I know. Please do. Please do. I, would oh. love, I, love okay. low, I love low flow, and I need to know more things on that stage pool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That would be great. Oh, Please. We want to do it. We want to do a tour. So you're, we're definitely putting your studio on there. That'd be fun. Oh, yes. <laughs> Doors are always open to you. Thank you. I love it. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. <laughs> well, I guess we should do our sign out. <laughs> yes. Oh, we're doing a special one today. <laughs> we have a special <laughs> sign out today because we have. We have Ooh. Yes, Ooh, I love it. It's a beautiful day. Don't fuck it up. Yes. I need more socks like that instead of just plain <laughs> black ones. Right, mine are just like <laughs> regular. <laughs> <laughs>